Hello and welcome to this special mini episode of the Internet of Things Made Simple. I'm Larry Bohumer. As a reminder, mini episodes are ones that kind of got caught in the middle. The topic was too long to fit into an open segment, but not long enough to justify doing a full episode on. So we often do these episodes from time to time. As always, I ask you to subscribe to our podcast using your favorite podcast service. And I do remind you, our next full episode is on Thursday, where we do a nice little recap of IoT at CES. I recommend you tune in. Some of you might be wondering, based on the title of this podcast, what exactly I was talking about. First, I wasn't implying that IoT is going to make the next smartphone, tablet, or search engine. What I was talking about is how IoT is going to enable solutions and create billion dollar companies like the products from these two companies have. I did a blog post on the same subject and I actually only referenced Apple and I got some feedback on it from Google fans. So I decided to add in Google because I guess I overlook them. They have been just as equally important as Apple in this area. So to start, these are not the only two companies that ever, ever helped create other technology companies. You know, Samsung and Facebook have obviously had a huge influence, but it does seem that these two are the strongest enablers of technology over the last decade. And here's what I mean by that. If you take their devices, so iPhone and iOS devices like iPad, as well as all the Android devices, there were definitely smartphones and tablets before and since, but these two seem to have attracted so many new developers to their platform. And this has helped create many billion dollar plus application companies like Uber, Yelp, you know, even Airbnb, Snapchat. Before the iPhone came out, most of the smartphones were very business dominated by companies like BlackBerry. They did have an ecosystem, but it was more focused for the security and applications that business needed, not so much for the consumer side. So that was definitely an underserved market. In order to be a great enabler of technology, I believe there's two important ingredients you have to have in your platform. The first is that people need to be able to use your product quite easily. And the second is that companies have to see that and want to invest in your platform for long-term growth because they believe they can create solutions that bring value to their customers. Apple has some negative things to it, obviously, but the one thing I think almost everyone can agree is they are quite good at taking existing technology and adding that layer of usability to it in a way that few companies can. I, I think Google is also in the same boat. I believe they've mastered integrating Android, YouTube, and all these other products quite well together. When you think about these two platforms, it's quite easy for a company to invest in building products and solutions for those platforms. However, having said that, I do believe the shine may be off these two companies just a little bit when it comes to creating the next wave of companies. Don't get me wrong, they're not going into business anytime soon. But after a while, even the greatest companies kind of run out of ideas. Their sheer size as well, they're both close to a trillion dollar market cap, makes it very difficult to move the needle with ideas. So you kind of have to take bigger swings for the fences. And the last thing is one only has to look at the fact that Warren Buffett, who I admire, but he is a value investor. So the fact that he's taking a huge stake in Apple kind of says that perhaps even he sees the growth years could be past them. So if these two companies are not likely to be as strong of technology enablers as they have been before, who or what will take the mantle? Obviously, it could be anybody's guess, but I believe that IoT as a platform is going to be the next Apple or Google in the world of technology. And here's kind of four reasons why. The first has to do with breadth of growth or the ability to grow in many different areas. Apple and Google's product were great that way and they're still going to be great in the future because they had a strong appeal to both the consumer and the corporate market. Millions of smartphones from both companies are sold and used in the business world along with things like Mac laptops and obviously companies use Google AdWords. But they did have an equally important push towards consumer, and that made them a dual threat. IoT will do that as well. It offers huge growth upside in both the consumer and the business markets. 
consumers are going to move much more towards things like smart health, smart home, and other areas. And eventually, they're going to become hooked on IoT-enabled technologies like autonomous driving, AR, VR, and even having a robot in the home. On the other side, businesses are going to use IoT solutions as they already are now, but they're going to use them even more to improve productivity, increase their margins, offer better service levels to their customers, and to make better products and more. So if you look at the ability to affect multiple markets, very few enablers can do it like IoT. The second has to do with the level of importance that it can bring. You know, I've heard people talking uh, about investing, and one of the ways they recommend investing is to invest in companies that have the chance to change people's lives. Well, that's a pretty widespread thing because, you know, does Uber fit into that category? You know, I've heard people talk about how their life was before and after Uber as if it was a life changing thing. I don't quite think that. It doesn't mean that Uber wasn't a good investment. I just think that it didn't actually change people's lives. A lot of the solutions enabled by IoT truly will change people's lives. So look at things like autonomous driving. People often think, well, that's great. You know, I can read behind the wheel now, but it might not change your life that much because that extra reading is not that big of a deal. But imagine you have a disability or you don't have the ability to drive because you've lost your sight. Autonomous driving vehicles would be a life changer for you. The same goes for robotics. In a preview episode, I talked about how there's a, a robotic little creature, I guess, that looks like Bart Simpson called LEQ. And that robot, when they gave it to different people in different demographics, namely the elderly, it almost gave them this big burst of happiness because they could communicate with it or they thought they could communicate it with it. And many of them would tell the device, you know, I love you and you're bringing me hope, which was very sweet. And I can see how robots can have that kind of effect on people. The next one might have an effect that helps businesses, but people often spit on the idea, and that's automation. So whether you like it or not, automation is changing a lot of different people's lives. And the last one that can change people's lives is smart health. When you can bring a better level of health to a rural community, or you can allow people to go home faster and to reduce healthcare cost, that is life power changing. And all these things, what they have in common is they're now today and will be more in the future powered by IoT enabling connectivity. So the third main area is IoT is gonna eventually solve more than what I call first world problems. A first world problems are things that aren't really a problem. There was a hilarious Saturday Night Live skit where people were complaining about the iPhone and then they had them talk to the people who were playing as if they were the manufacturer over in Shenzhen and people were complaining about maps and the worker was saying, I don't have a map because all I ever do is go from my desk to my bed beside it. So it kind of showed what we refer to as first world problems. IoT solutions, especially on the retail and consumer side, were very much solving first world problems. Like the best example is the $18,000 smart bathtub. I don't think that's really solving a problem. I think that's just the epitome of luxury. It's like those TVs that they now have this year at CES that can roll up and down and hide away. I don't think you need one of those. I think that's the ultimate want product. But as IoT has started to become more user friendly, a lot of the companies are starting to solve actual issues with them. So look at products like Ring and uh, Nest. These are keeping people safer. They're reducing their heating and cooling costs. They're preventing packages from being stolen. These are actually things that's making a difference in people's lives. And ironically, although I talked about how companies like Apple and Google wouldn't lead the charge, it is due to products from companies like Google and Amazon, you know, the Alexa and the Google Home platform that have allowed these products to become more user friendly. So I didn't say they were going away. They're just not going to be as big of an influence. The last one has to do with the highway that we have today for IoT and what's coming in the future. And by highway, I mean the networks that data transmits back and forth across. 4G, and if you go back a little bit, 2G and 3G were fine for IoT. Millions of devices are set up on those networks. There was nothing wrong with it. And the same goes for Wi-Fi. It was very effective for a lot of home-based IoT. But I think better is coming. CAD-M and 5G, I've talked about this before, they're completely different and they have completely different markets. 
but they're equally important breakthroughs for IoT to help drive the appeal for technology and to increase the use of IoT. So not to go over it too many more times because I've talked about CAD-M, it's going to reduce the cost and the complexity of IoT, meaning that people aren't going to have to set up devices. They're going to work right out of the box. It's going to increase the business case in ROI for adding cellular connectivity to just about anything. On the exact opposite scale, 5G is a much more expensive technology, but for people that are looking at the lower latency, and that's key industries like autonomous driving and mobile health, it's going to change a lot of what they do in that area. And I think eventually it's going to change things like AR and VR as well. So to recap, again, before I get yelled at by people, Apple, Google are not going away. They're still going to be dominant companies 5, 10, 15 years from now. And they are going to continue to have enticing platforms for technology to be, to be built off of. I just think that IoT offers so many more growth possibilities for both investors and for companies that are starting up in the world of technology over the next decade. I think it's going to replace those two companies as being the dominant technology enabler. As always, I like to create a bit of trouble and I love to hear what you think. Feel free to reach out to me on Facebook or LinkedIn or any other way you can get a hold of me. And I thank you for listening. Take care.